Hi, I'm Terry Brungis, wildlife biologist with Kentucky Fish and Wildlife. Uh, today I'm going to share a little bit with you about one of my favorite hobbies, kayaking. Kayaking is a great way to get out and enjoy the outdoors in Kentucky, uh, whether you're kayak fishing, camping, just paddling along, bird watching, or uh, running rapids. It's a great way to enjoy the outdoors. I've got several kayaks with me today uh, that I'd like to show you. And we're going to start out with a recreational kayak. Uh, this kayak uh, is called a recreational kayak or a rec boat. It's a great boat uh, for um, people that are just getting into kayaking. Uh, it's inexpensive. Uh, they can be found at most of your local sporting goods stores. Um, it's great for all kinds of kayaking, whether you're just paddling on a lake or a slow moving river. Uh, it's, it's not so good for whitewater kayaking, so don't take it whitewater kayaking. Uh, but it's a great little boat. Uh, one of the main things you need to take from this is to always wear a life jacket. Uh, no matter what you're doing, uh, a life jacket is the most important piece of equipment uh, you can have with you. Always wear it, wear it tight, wear it in the proper form, and uh, have a good time. It'll keep you safe. Uh, so this boat, like I said, is a recreational kayak. Uh, great little all-around boat. Uh, next, I've got several sit-on-top kayaks to show you. Um, I've got a fishing sit-on-top kayak and a basic sit-on-top kayaking. Um, this one is a uh, setup. Um, it's got fishing poles. It's got a bar that you can actually stand up on. Uh, it's got dry wells you can store gear. Um, the seat can be moved sit to sit up for uh, fishing or you can actually move it to put it down to make it a little bit more stable uh, when you're paddling. Uh, this boat is a very stable boat. Uh, it's great. It can get in where uh, non-motorized boats, uh, where motorized boats uh, can't. So um, you could got plenty of room here to put like a tackle box, a cooler, whatever gear you need for the day. Um, a first aid kit is really good to have um, in all these boats. Try to always take a first aid kit and include things like uh, tape and gauze, antiseptic uh, gloves, and uh, pliers. If you get hooked by going under a tree and get hooked, I know uh, we've had some experiences with that. Get hooked by a fish hook that was left hanging in a tree, you're going to need to be able to take that out. So here's a little first aid, little basic first aid kit that you can stick with you. But this boat is great uh, for fishing, but it's, it is heavy, but it's, it's very sturdy. Uh, this is another little fishing kayak. It's a little more inexpensive. Uh, it's just a basic one. I've added a little seat pad, but you can see that it's got places for fishing poles. It's got room for coolers, room to put uh, small gear in here, so it's just a great all-around boat. Um, these boats could be uh, used for uh, full day trips. They've got plenty of room for gear. Um, got one more little child's sit-on-top boat here. Just a really inexpensive little boat uh, that's great for kids starting out. It's perfect for them. They can even climb up the side uh, and get in it. And here's a child's paddle. This is just a, a small paddle you can get basically any sporting goods store. Uh, this is interactive, so if anybody has any questions during this video, feel free to send them in and we'll try to get them answered. Um, paddle boarding has actually become very popular lately. Uh, so this paddle board has uh, got a few accessories to make it uh, easier to fish out of. It's got, we've got fishing poles here. We've got, we've got a bucket you can sit on. You can move it anywhere you want. Um, and then it's even got a paddle holder. So you can use this for fishing as well. Fishing is a great, great way to get out and see the outdoors. Um, for information on fishing, uh, if you are interested in learning to kayak fish, you can actually call uh, our department we do offer uh, classes on that. You can call and ask for information education aquatic educator Easton Copley, and he can help set you up with a class. Um, 
There's also uh, Blue Water Trails on our Fish and Wildlife website that gives you a lot of information on where to go and uh, the type of streams or rivers or lakes that you're interested in. There's over 30 uh, trails, Blue Water Trails listed on our department website and that's at fw.ky.gov. Just type Blue Water Trails into the search bar and that's an excellent way to find a place to go, whether you're fishing or just kayaking, paddle boarding. This is one of my favorite boats. Uh, it is a, an inflatable kayak. This one's actually a tandem kayak that fits two people. Uh, it's great for um, when you don't have a truck or you don't have roof racks to haul your kayak. You can just deflate this and roll it up and stick it in the back of your car. Um, it's set, currently set up for two people, but you can remove the seats and move them around and use it for just one person. Plenty of room for fishing gear. Uh, this boat is really great because it's an all-around boat where it can be used on flat water. It can be used anywhere. It can be used on white water. Um, you can use, uh, put these thigh straps in and actually do some pretty good white water with that. It'll hold you in the boat. Um, I've got a little bit of gear here. This is a, a small pump that you can actually take with you. Just clip it into your boat. And if you get deflated or anything on the water, you're good to go there. Uh, it's always good to have, have a, a, a larger manual pump uh, to pump this up. Um, this uh, piece of gear is basically just a dry bag, but it's a cooler dry bag, so you can put ice in this and keep uh, your drinks or your lunch cool. Uh, and this is a different kind of dry bag, uh, but in this dry bag I have actually a repair kit for this boat. So these boats usually come when you buy them with a repair kit. So uh, in case you run into something, you can fix it real quick. Um, but this, as you can see, has lots of room for gear. Uh, you can put your kids in it, you can put your dogs in it, uh, you can fish out of it, um, or, or like I said, do, do whitewater in it. So it's one of my favorite boats because it's so versatile and you can do about anything in it. This is a touring kayak. Uh, it's a longer boat. Uh, it's made uh, to be light and to be fast. Um, the longer they are, usually the less stable they are. Uh, but they're, they're a great boat for, you can take this boat to an ocean, to the sound, to a marsh, to a lake, to a river. Um, it has a skeg on it that you can lower that helps it track in straight water so it'll go in a straight line. It's got plenty of room for gear. Um, these little dry wells are great. Uh, you can put uh, a light packer could put, uh, here's a little chair, a light packer could put all their camping gear in here and do, do an overnight camping trip. Uh, these boats, uh, I have uh, float bags in these boats. It's basically uh, just a blown up bag you stick in the back. It prevents water from uh, getting in the boat. So if you flip this boat, it doesn't fill with water so much and that helps it float and uh, makes it easier to retrieve. Um, this boat does require uh, what's called a spray skirt. A spray skirt goes around the boat, you wear it, and you place it around the boat. It keeps the, you in the boat and it keeps water out of the boat. So that's a pretty good piece of equipment. But this is a long, very light boat. And it's, it's great for people that want to go long distances or go fast. Um, but it is, it does require some skill because you've, you've got a really uh, less stable boat than all the others I've shown so far. Um, and now we're looking at another favorite of mine. Okay. How much does an inflatable weigh? How much does an inflatable kayak weigh? I've got a question. Uh, this one is usually uh, around somewhere from uh, 25 to 35 pounds. I think it's um, 25 to 30 pounds. Uh, 
probably about 30 pounds. But I can easily handle that one myself. Good question. This boat, uh, this is a whitewater kayak. It's one of my favorites. Um, it does require two additional pieces of gear. The spray skirt we just talked about and a helmet. So um, a helmet is very important in this boat. Um, so your spray skirt is gonna keep you in the boat. So if you flip, you're going to flip head first. Without a helmet on, you might get a rock upside your head. So uh, you make sure you wear a helmet. Uh, you're not gonna be able to get out of your boat if you're unconscious. Uh, so basically what you do is if you do flip, you, you do one of two things. You either pull the loop on your skirt and get out of your boat, or you roll back up. Uh, whitewater kayaking uh, does require a skill where you learn how to actually roll back up, um, but it is, is a great technique to learn. Uh, if you're interested in learning something like that, you can contact your local kayaking club and they do lessons on that. Uh, it's a lot of fun and a great way to enjoy the outdoors. Uh, this boat also has float bags in it, uh, but you can fit a few more pieces of gear as well. You can put your snacks or lunch in here and put that down in there. Uh, a couple other pieces of equipment that are recommended if you're whitewater kayaking is a whistle. If you get in trouble, you blow the whistle. Um, and if your friends get in trouble, you use a throw rope. So you can actually rescue someone with a throw rope. So those are two really important pieces of gear to have uh, in addition to the spray skirt and the helmet when you're whitewater kayaking. So um, paddles are great. So whitewater paddles are usually a little shorter. This one has uh, basically gloves on it. They're removable. So if you're paddling in cold water, you can actually uh, use these little gloves, stick your hands in, keep your hands warm. Now this boat weighs about 40 pounds, so it's still not too heavy. The fishing kayaks can weigh like 80 to 100 pounds, and they're really heavy. Here I've got a child's whitewater boat. I actually just got this boat. Uh, for one of my kids, uh, it's a tiny, cute little boat, but they also require uh, the skirt, the life jacket, the helmet uh, with this as well. So uh, kids doing whitewater have to have the same type of gear that we do. So the skirt, and here's a little life jacket. So, um, I've also got a little bit of gear, a little bit of odds and ends here. Um, this is a, a float bag, like we talked about, that goes in the back of a kayak. This is a pretty big one to make all sizes. So um, that's a pretty important piece of equipment. I've seen people use beach balls instead, uh, and that's fine too. Just anything you can inflate to put in that boat to uh, keep it from filling with water. Um, here's different types of dry bags. So this is a pretty big dry bag that could probably hold um, a sleeping bag or a small tent that you can roll up. Uh, here's another type of dry bag. It's a little bigger. Uh, it opens up. It's more of a duffel, so you can put all kinds of stuff in this and stick it in the uh, inflatable kayak or even the fishing kayak um, there. Um, I've just got a regular gear bag here uh, with some gear in it uh, that's um, you can put your gear in this, uh, and obviously because of the mesh, it'll dry, so you won't have moldy gear. Um, let's see, we've already gone over the throw rope. Uh, different types of shoe, shoes. Um, you've got booties that are really handy um, for kayaking, because uh, especially in whitewater kayaking, there's not much foot room, so you want to get something that's uh, like a booty to um, to wear, or you can do if you're if you're in a bigger boat or something, you have more room. You can do just river little river tennis shoes that have water drainage in them. Yeah, uh, one of the things to do is when you are kayaking, um, make sure you have a float plan and you tell people where you're going, uh, and, and tell them your expected time uh, that you're going to be back. Uh, make sure you know the section of river or creek you're doing. Um, so um, 
so you're safe. Make sure that uh, you check the water levels too. So um, what could be a peaceful float one day uh, with a few rain events can turn into something dangerous. So you want to make sure you basically have all that information um, before you go kayaking. Don't just put on a river or a creek blindly, not knowing what's up ahead. So do we have any other questions right now? Um, what would be some advice for somebody who's just getting into deep kayaking? Oh yeah, uh, so I, I asked the question, what would be some advice for somebody that's just getting into kayaking? Um, well, um, I would uh, do some research on what type of kayaking you want to do if you're going to do uh, fishing or floating or you just want to kayak for fun. Uh, I would look at the different types of kayaks and determine what you want to do. Um, I would, if you're interested in kayak fishing, you can contact the department and get some lessons on kayak fishing. Uh, you can contact your local uh, kayak dealer and they can uh, give you some more advice. Um, you can contact your local paddling club. A lot of them have uh, beginner clinics that can uh, teach you some skills uh, needed for that. Um, but yeah, I would definitely research, determine first what type of kayaking you want to do and then go from there. So yeah, that's about it today uh, for kayaking. Um, types of kayaking and encourage everybody to go outdoors and enjoy Kentucky, what they have to offer. Like I said, there are about 30 different uh, trips on our website under Blue Water Trails that you can go on and enjoy. And also, if you're interested in kayak fishing, you can go to our fishing home at our website at fw.ky.gov and click on where to fish. And that'll give you information, all the information you know, want to know on fishing, whether it be the fishing limits, uh, the, the uh, where to go to fishing, where to put in, where to take out, things like that.